The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 171. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Get your free audiobook by visiting the Tao of Self-Confidence.com. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan. And today I have a lovely lady who's all the way from Australia. She is known as Australia's High Priestess of Malaysian Cuisine. So, you know, I'm really excited to have her on and share her story about self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Jackie M. Tang. Jackie, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. How are you, Sheena? Yeah, I'd love to. No, okay. My claim to fame essentially is Malaysian food, uh, by extension, Southeast Asian food. And also my other claim to fame is that I'm the mother of, uh, I'm a sole parent to Noah, who's my Down syndrome toddler, who's nearly four years old. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Jackie, what's your cultural background? I am Malaysian-born Chinese of Hakka descent, and I've lived in Australia since I was 17 years old. That's 32 years now. Yeah, so I'm really old. (laughs) Thanks for sharing that. Based on the pictures, I would not be able to tell. I mean, you're at that age. so (laughs) Uh, It's an Asian thing, I think. (laughs) Yeah, I think so too. (laughs) So what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? You know, um, I read quite a bit, and this is a fairly recent one. It's one by James L. Tucker, who wrote the book called Choose Yourself. And I found this really encouraging for me. And basically what he said was, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter who your audience is, 30% will love it, 30% will hate it, and 30% won't care. And to me, that's very liberating because it just helps me to not get stressed out about the blowback I get when I post anything that's a little bit, you know, I not controversial, but invariably, whatever I do, I've found that always to be the case. I can post something really completely innocuous and I always get comments that, uh, you know, that just used to rile me up. But nowadays I'm like, yeah, whatever. I love that quote. And it's true, right? We're so you know, especially like Asian women, we're so, um, we always care about what other people think, not knowing, yeah. you know, most people don't really think about you, right? I mean, they're too busy thinking about yeah. themselves that it, it doesn't even matter. So when you post something that you might like, I don't know if people will like this or not. It's like, don't worry about it. There are exactly. people, there, there will be people out there who like it and just, you, we just focus on that. So great quote. And in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? Um, you know, this has been kind of like, uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I've basically run my own business for the last 15 years plus and longer than that kind of like, you know, part time. But uh, as far as how I define self-confidence nowadays, just by virtue of being, um, you know, the best at what I do, I have kind of adopted this attitude that, look, the world will adapt to, you know, to, to your, basically to your requirements if you're good enough at what you do. So basically, I see myself as being very good at Malaysian cooking. Um, you know, I, I've got a very, very big repertoire and I've got a large social media footprint as well. I've got 1.9 million followers. Um, so with that, with a lot of my kind of like, I guess, you know, you can't essentially come to the table, you know, and just kind of like try and throw your weight around. But if you've got enough of of a, if you've built up enough of a resume, the world will, will, will basically kind of like adapt to how you want things done. For instance, because like I mentioned, I'm a sole parent of Noah, my Down syndrome baby. When I go for meetings, even in boardrooms and that sort of stuff, I have no compunction about bringing him along, pushing him in a stroller and letting him kind of like, you know, entertain himself on the, by the side while I'm discussing strategy, strategy and that sort of stuff. Because as far as I'm concerned, if you think I'm, I've got enough you know, adds value to what you want from me, you will put up with all those things, you know. I think some mothers can be a little bit timid. I mean, you hear of horror stories. I remember reading in the States about this woman attending an interview, leaving her baby in the car and, you know, getting arrested for it. And you feel so incredibly bad about those kinds of situations. I think we women have to really kind of take ownership and learn about the whole idea of integrating kids and that sort of stuff into your life. But at the same time, like I said, you have to have something that you can bring to the table. So on the one hand, it's developing your skills and building on that. 
educating yourself. And on the other hand, just having the confidence to be able to, you know, tell the world, look, this is who I am. I come with my life is, does not come in neat little packages, but it comes with all these other aspects of me that, you know, if anything will actually add to what I can bring to your business or to your marketing efforts and that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, a, 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 and, and, and as an extension of that, what I've done of late essentially is to use my platform. You know, like I said, I've got a, you know, I'm, I'm fairly active online and that sort of stuff. Uh, but to use that platform to essentially make a stand about things that I'm passionate about, okay? So first of all, um, I'm passionate about Down syndrome advocacy. And second of all, I'm passionate about coming across as a strong woman. And to that end, and I think that's how we connected online, Sheena, the fact that I was trying to essentially campaign to expose a, a sex, essentially a sexual con man is how I describe him, who's a celebrity as well. So I'm basically taking the fight to him. And I think the fact that, um, you know, the fact that I've got a, a social media presence is something that enables me to be able to speak out and I think that's how I like to be able to portray essentially self-confidence. The fact that I'm, I'm a brave enough to, I, I guess, move away from the whole food thing. I mean, I'm a food person. Everyone knows me as a food person, but not be scared about essentially taking a stand about issues I'm passionate about as well that may not be food related. Awesome. And, you know, I love that, you know, some people are afraid to like just branch out thinking, you know, that's not what they're known for. But, you know, for you, it's like you're passionate about it. and when you have that passion, it will, you know, spread like wildfire. So, you know, great definition. And what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? You know, it's quite interesting you should ask that because I don't know if it's an Asian thing, or but I know because my mom, my mom passed away when I was quite young, when I was six years old. But I always my memory of her was that she was very stoic she, she didn't share a lot you always see her with this kind of like you know very stoic attitude towards life regardless of the kind of hardships she went through so I I think I, 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 I caught a lot of that from her so for the best part of my life I tried to compartmentalize everything, you know, uh, when I started being active online with my food thing, I thought, look, people, you know, I, I was told outright, look, I, I'm sure you get told that as well. Look, people are selfish, you know, when they come and visit your white website or whatever, they want to see what's in it for them. So uh, I, I, I kind of adopted that mentality and think I always have to add value. I always have to tell people how to cook this, how to cook that and whatever. So I was very, very scared about sharing too much of my life online. You know, so I, I think that kind of ultimately was so ingrained in me that I remember there was one time I hired a business consultant and she told, look, just don't mention anything about your private life. Nobody cares about your soft story, you know, and that kind of reinforced my thinking that, look, I really should just stick to food and talk about nothing else. And when I, I went through a really tough pregnancy, my marriage broke up. Uh, and every time I went into the doctors, they had worse and worse news about the state of my pregnancy. They were putting some pressure on me to basically terminate, first of all, so because they diagnosed that he had Down syndrome. And not only that, they was going to need some major life-saving surgeries when he came out. But every time I went in for more consultations, the news just seemed to get worse and worse. And ultimately, I had to have an emergency cesarean. But if you can imagine going through all that while running a restaurant, while maintaining a social media footprint, I never mentioned any of that to my followers at all. And the first mention publicly online was when I actually finally, like I said, was wheeled in for an emergency cesarean. My son was uh, stuck in the ICU and someone delivered a bunch of flowers to my hospital room. And I posted a picture of that bunch of flowers and the internet just sort of lit up. Oh, I didn't even know you were pregnant sort of thing, let alone that you're going through all this. So yeah, and I didn't even actually come out and say, look, this has been my life. It's horrible. I'll just say, look, thanks for the flowers and whatever and that sort of stuff. So it's quite interesting that uh, subsequent to that particular, I guess, point, I started to share a little bit more. And just the incredible response from my followers have just really kind of like started to open up my eyes about how, look, you know, you're not just about one thing. You, 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 there, there's so many different aspects to your personality, to your life and all that. And people like to hear the story, okay? So, and, and that's, that's, that, that's been kind of like a learning process for me over the last few years. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, it's, it's amazing that I think it's, it, it is something with Asian women, like we're just not allowed to share what we're going through. I don't know if it's like, you know, it just, it looks bad if a woman like shares their problems or anything. And I'm not saying like you have to complain about your life or complain about something, but 
you know, people follow people, right? I mean, people follow you. I mean, you have almost two yeah. million two million followers for a reason because they're following you. They want to know not just about cooking, but your life, what you're doing. And, you know, it, it's okay to share your story out there because you can inspire somebody out there to do what they've always wanted to do. To do. Maybe they want to be you know, um, you know, have their own cooking show like you, right, Jackie? And yeah. and I think, you know, the more we can share our stories out there, the more we can inspire people. So, you know, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. And what was your aha moment when you realized, you know, you don't always have to like hide everything, right? You can just go out there and just be yourself, like be your true authentic self. When my son spent seven months in the ICU and I had started sharing a little bit about my situation there. And, and in part, I have to admit there was some element of, I guess, uh, self-interest there because I wanted people to know why I'm not running my restaurant. I was, you know, basically juggling between uh, spending hours and hours at the hospital and then back to the restaurant. But still, I was still holding back a little bit to some extent. I would post pictures when he finally came out of hospital. I would post pictures of him coming with me. I I gave up my restaurant at some stage and I started. Well, I've been running these market stores, the farmers markets, where I basically sold Malaysian food, and I would bring him along, essentially, kind of as like a subtle. Uh, message to other women who may be struggling or trying to think about like raising a family while running their own business. So to me, that was kind of like positive reinforcement that look, you you might have a disabled kid, you might be single and all that, you but you can still do all that sort of thing and still have your kid around with me. So I was posting pictures of him online and that sort of stuff, but never heavy handed. You know what I mean? I wasn't preaching to people and saying, look, you know, whatever. But what happened, essentially what happened was at one of my markets that I traded at, this is about July of 2015, what happened? happened was I got a phone call from the market manager one day telling me, look, there's a member of the public who's been very disturbed that you bring your child with you to work every week. And he's going, he's in the process of he or she, I don't actually know, uh, is in the process of getting a petition going to get your son, your baby son removed from the market. I never knew what their motivation was. Um, but essentially to me, I'd been running that market store for 14 years. I was thinking, okay, fine. They don't want me there. There are lots of other, lots of other places who would want me. So what I did was I posted on social media and told people, look, uh, my next market store coming up in two days could be my last one and this is the reason and I had no I had no expectation of kind of like any drama I just wanted to forewarn my, my, my followers and then the media grabbed hold of the story and suddenly I had uh, TV cameras and all that following me around I was covered pretty widely uh, you know, even the Huffington Post covered the story. So it was pretty, pretty large scale. And part of it, I guess, is the fact that my son has Down syndrome. So a lot of disability advocates got really, really upset about it. And I essentially at that point in time, I thought this is going to be my last market. I'm just going to be able to sleep in from now on on Saturdays. But I started getting messages from people, uh, you know, saying, look, please fight on, please stay, you know, don't give in and that sort of stuff. They said, look, and, and other people were, were telling me, and one particular woman said, look, you know, a lot of us have gone through uh, discrimination in our lives, whether subtly or not so subtly, but we can't speak out. You can, you've got a platform, you need to speak out, you need to make a stand for us sort of thing. And that motivated me to actually kind of like stand firm and, and fight for the right to stay at that market. And Ever since then, I've realized, and then this other gentleman also posted on my Facebook, he said something to the effect, look, Jackie, you know, uh, my family and I have been buying food from you for years and years. We watched while you went through, you know, your, you, you know, when you were heavily pregnant and unloading your vehicle and that sort of stuff. And we watched while you, you know, carried yourself with grace. We watched while your son was in the hospital for seven months while you continued to operate. And, you know, you, you're nothing, you, you're, you're an inspiration. And I never thought of myself that way, you know, I thought that was really intriguing. Um, and ever since then, I've realized, look, uh, and that's another quote I want to throw at you. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bastardizing here to some extent. But essentially, this is from Hal Elrod. I heard from one of his podcasts where he said, uh, how, you know, what, however you live your life, you know, uh, whatever you do actually gives other people permission to do the same sort of thing. So essentially what he's saying is that your life is an example for other people. So that's why I've kind of decided to, you know, I've, I never started out to be a social activist, you know what I mean? But I, I've, I've come to realize that, you know, the fact that I have a voice enables me to speak out about things that I'm passionate about. So, you know, that's been extremely, extremely liberating for me. And to me, really is the definition of self-confidence, that the fact that I'm ready to take a fight, you know, to, to people about issues that I think are important. Awesome. And that's a phenomenal story. You know, it's, it's amazing what you can do when you just do, you know, these simple actions that create big impacts in people's lives. So, you know, I mean, after that, I mean, I'm sure what's, what's your life have been like now? Oh, it's uh, very interesting. The great thing is, you know, the fact that I, I, I run my own schedule is very, very, uh, I, I guess, just 
helps me to be able to pick and choose what sort of projects I want. I'm affiliated with a number of different brands, so that's very encouraging. I did mention briefly as well about exposing a, a, a sexual con man. I unfortunately am one of eight women that uh, I've discovered so far. And interestingly enough, what happened essentially, I was dating a, a TV star, an American TV star for uh, a, a few years. And essentially what happened was about a month or so ago, I someone approached me right after he and I broke up for good. Someone approached me from his past and told me, look, you need to speak to this woman. And you need to speak to this other woman, okay? Because basically it had been uh, playing up behind your back. So I spoke to them, I contacted them, and we started comparing notes. And we realized that what he had done, uh, essentially, I, I gathered from my research, that he had essentially uh, groomed all of us to keep quiet about our relationships with him. And he essentially, he displayed sociopathic behavior where it wasn't just a fling. This is not a bad breakup story. What he had done was promised us a future together at the same time and done a lot of things that essentially pointed to the fact that he would prey on vulnerable single mothers online sort of thing. So it is a fairly controversial uh, issue, but I decided to go public with it. And since I went public about 10 days ago or so, I've had five other women come forward. So, and one of them was actually actively dating him. And that makes me, that's given me new resolve to continue what I'm doing, essentially to kind of name and shame him and tell the world, because essentially, like I said, he's using his celebrity to be able to prey on women. He gains access to women online. When he connected with me four plus years ago, I recognize his name. I don't usually uh, entertain men who randomly uh, private message me, but because I recognize him from a TV show, I decided to connect with him and we started chatting. And that was his MO. Essentially, what he does is he has a profile of the kind of women he wants to target. And then he goes out and does that. And like I said, other women need to be warned about him. I'm very, very, like I said, I'm very, very upfront about it. Um, I, I, I'm taking a lot of risk to my brand, but I think it's something that needs to be done. And, uh, and that's validated by the fact that these are the five women are thanking me for coming forward and speaking out. Uh, a lot of them want to remain anonymous. <laughs> They're scared about the reper repercussions, how it will affect the family and that sort of stuff. But I'm basically the public face of this new campaign to expose this man because I think the world needs to know. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, you, you are taking a risk in that. And sometimes, you know, when, when you have a mission or a vision that's bigger than what you're doing, like, like your celebrity status, like in Australia, I mean... I believe it'll just come back to you, you know, in more ways than one, like the good karma will come back. I mean, just having five women just speak up about it is huge, right? Because I believe if one person, if you can inspire one person, you can inspire a whole army. And Jackie, if, you know, to the woman who's listening to your story, you know, she may be in a similar situation with her self-confidence, what would be that one tip you would give to her? What I would tell them is, you know, I mentioned earlier, look, first of all, you have to have something to bring to the table. You can't be, you know, an empty vessel and have nothing and demand this and demand that. Really, you have to be very, very, you know, if you're, if you're passionate about something, get yourself skilled up on it. And then that gives you power, that gives you, uh, that gives you I guess, uh, something to be able to negotiate with, okay? So be good at what you do and that, that will that will get the ball rolling in terms of building up your confidence and then be not, don't be afraid about sharing everything, your, your, your full self, you know. So don't compartmentalize everything. People will learn to accept you for, you know, for, as a full package as opposed to just someone who, you know, is very, very, very kind of like narrow and very specific. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that tip. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? First of all, my website, jackiem.com.au, which is uh, J-A-C-K-I-E-M for Malaysia, .com .au. And you can find me at, yeah, that will have links to all my social media profiles, but I'm fairly active on Google+. Plus. I'm the most followed Australian on Google+, Plus, which is google.com slash plus jackiem. And then, yeah, like I said, you'll be able to find me everywhere from there. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Jackie, you can also head on over to the tavselfconfidence.com and search for Jackie's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I really just want to thank Jackie for, you know, taking the time to share her story with us. So thank you so much. No problem. It'll be my pleasure. Awesome. To our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll catch you later. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Child of Self-Confidence. 
Subscribe to the Tao of Self-Confidence on iTunes and Stitcher to hear more stories of amazing women finding their inner journey to self-confidence.